Good morning, students. Welcome to classes on economics of capital market. In the last video, we have discussed about financial assets, its peculiarities, and examples. And in this video, we will be discussing about the properties of financial assets. Let's move on to that. Here, we will be discussing about seven important properties of financial assets and they are moneyness, reversibility, term to maturity, liquidity, convertibility, cash flow and return predictability and tax status. Now let's move on to these in detail. First property, moneyness. Moneyness implies that Financial assets can be easily converted into cash within a defined time and determinable value. So, financial asset can be converted into cash with little risk, delay or cost. And this property of financial asset is known as moneyness. And these financial assets are considered as near money assets. Compared to other assets, financial assets can be easily converted into cash. And this property is known as moneyness property. Now, examples of uh, financial assets like treasury bills, treasury certificates, trade bills, commercial papers, and certificates of deposits. These are money market instruments. These can be easily traded in money market and can be easily converted into now let's move on to the second property, reversibility. Reversibility means the cost of investing in a financial asset and then getting out of it and back into cash again. So this process is known as reversibility. For example, an investor has some cash in his hand and he, uh, he buys a financial asset for this cash. So now he have converted cash into financial asset and then he feels that keeping this financial asset is not uh, profitable. So he sells the financial asset and convert his financial asset into cash and this process is known as uh, reversibility. So this reversibility involves certain costs, the so costs like commission cost, transaction cost, etc. And this cost are termed as round trip cost. So for some assets, some financial assets, round trip cost will be very low, whereas for others, round trip cost will be high. So round trip cost or reversibility cost varies from one asset to another. So this is the second property. So now let's move on to the third property of financial asset. Term to maturity. Term to maturity is the time period between date of issue of a financial asset and its maturity date or date on which financial payments are made. The term to maturity of a financial asset is a time period between the date of issue of the financial asset and its maturity period. And the term to maturity of financial assets differ from or vary from one asset to another. For example, in terms of bonds, the, the term to maturity uh, may be, say, 20 to 30 years. But in case of money market instruments like treasury bills, term to maturity varies from 91 days, 181 days, 182 days, etc. So term to maturity differ from one asset to another. This is the third property. Now let's move on to the fourth property, liquidity. Liquidity implies the easiness with which uh, a financial asset can be converted into cash. If a person want to sell the financial asset immediately, uh, and if it's possible with very low cost and with convenience, then that is known as liquidity. So certain financial assets or financial instruments are highly liquid. For example, treasury bills, treasury certificates, 
certificates of deposit, bill of exchange, and shares of blue chip companies. They are considered as highly liquid financial assets because uh, we can trade it in the money market, trade it in the financial market, and we can easily convert these financial assets into cash. Whereas certain assets, certain financial assets are considered as illiquid assets. For example, the claim of a private pension fund. Uh, that private pension funds cannot be easily converted into cash. Only at the time of maturity, they can be converted into cash. So they are considered as illiquid. Now let's move on to the fifth property, convertibility. Convertibility refers to the notion that some financial assets can be converted into other assets. So convertibility is the property of certain financial assets that they can be converted into other assets. The typical example is convertible bonds. So in the case of convertible bonds, bonds can be converted into equity shares. And there are also certain preference shares that can be converted into equity shares. So this property of certain financial assets are known as convertibility. Now let's move on to the sixth property, cash flow and return predictability. So the cash flow is the cash yield of a financial asset per unit of time. So the owner of a financial asset can predict the cash flow or return on that particular asset. For example, a bond holder or a deposit holder, they know the rate of interest and they, they can predict the cash flow or return per year. So, cash flow and return predictability is an important feature of financial asset. Now, let's move on to the last property of financial asset, tax status. Tax status refers to the taxability of interest income generated from a financial asset. Owners of financial assets, every year they receive interest income from financial assets. And these interest income are liable to be taxed by the government. The tax status on financial assets varies from one economy to another. We know there are certain tax havens uh, where uh, the interest income generated from financial assets are exempted from taxation. Whereas in certain countries, uh, the interest income from uh, financial assets are highly or heavily taxed. Another important concept is that the tax status on financial assets also differs from one type of security another uh, certain interest uh, certain assets are exempted from taxation and certain assets are uh, heavily taxed 